Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that pipe. Oh. Oh. Uh, this one, this one's a kind of a, a little bit better here, James. Yeah. Let's well, I'll get you set up with the net. I'll just set the net up. You stay on the boat. Okay. You stay on the boat. I can net. I can net my own fish. Main thing I need is boat control. Boat control. Yeah, I got a question for you while I'm landing this fish. If you had to pick four bodies of water that have a, have had a major, major impact on a sport of walleye fishing, which lakes would you pick? Which bodies of water would you pick? Lake, rivers, reservoirs, it doesn't make a difference. You know, interesting question, isn't it? Which, whoa, 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 whoa. Which bodies of water, again, would you pick that have changed or impacted the sport of walleye fishing today and brought it to the level that it is? Let's see if we agree. We picked four of them with the emphasis on one main one today, but I know they all have had or played their part. I bet you you'll get some of them. We're gonna answer it by the end of the show. Ta-da! Get her back, James. There's an old saying, necessity is the mother of invention. And when it comes to angling, there is always a necessity. Ted is catching more and bigger fish. We haven't heard anything good on, on the fishing report so far. Nobody's catching anything yet. Hmm. Have you ever wondered who invented the frog? How about a spinnerbait? What about the spoon? Lures have been around in some shape or another for thousands of years, and baits have been tweaked tuned, tested, and ultimately refined to fill that necessity that all anglers have, catching more fish. And when it comes to walleye fishing, Mill Axe is the proving ground, the area 51 of walleye fishing. I got one going? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <sighs> pretty good one. Pretty good, James. Feels pretty good. Yeah. Man, oh man, this wind is a pain. An absolute pain. However, when you're poking eyeballs, it's worth it. Jimmy and I are on one of the most premier walleye lakes in the country. Name of it is Malak, real close to our office. And we get to fish it often. The lake has got a lot, a lot of fish in it. You know, and it's a very, very unique body of water. There's actually not another lake in North America that looks like Malek. Jim, here. I got you. Yeah, that oh, looks you like Malek. Come here, buddy. Whoa, 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 what uh, are you doing, Bob? I, I don't know, just trick netting. Okay, hang <laughs> There on. you go. <laughs> I was saying, there's not another lake actually in the world, in the world, man, that looks like Malek. It's a lake unto its own. And uh, I'll, I'll get that. Uh, and it is loaded and has been for years with fish like this. Take a look at this system. It is unbelievably unique. Malax Lake in central Minnesota is one of the finest fisheries in the world. At 132,000 acres, it's basically an 18 by 22 mile oval exposed to the wind. Rocks abound along the entire shoreline, providing outstanding spawning conditions for a self-sustaining walleye fishery. The area along the North Shore is known as the sand, 
and like much of the lake, has a mixture of shallow rock piles, hosting smallmouth bass, and deep weeds that draw pike and muskie. The central portion of the lake hosts the famed Mille Lacs mud flats, which are not so much mud, but rather large areas of glacially deposit peat-like material rising off the bottom. The flats are hotbeds of live bait rigging and spinner fishing for walleyes from late spring through midsummer. The southwestern section of the lake has several large bays filled with weeds that host a mixture of pike, muskies, and walleyes throughout the year. The southern and eastern shorelines are known for rock reefs that draw walleyes shallow under windy conditions. And like many areas of the lake, the shallow rocks here are hotbeds of smallmouth bass activity. The large open basin of the lake provides a late summer trolling fishery for walleyes with anglers typically trolling crankbaits at about the 30-foot level across miles of wide open basin. Millax grows huge. big fish of all species fueled by abundant minnows, shiners, perch, and cisco forage bases. Some of the biggest walleye, pike, and muskies that swim haunt its expansive waters. It's a popular fishing destination that draws countless anglers from the region to experience its bounty. I got one. You got one? Got him? Yep. I suppose you're gonna put me to work. Yeah, you're gonna need the net, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah. I think a netter? Yeah. Well, just because of the wind conditions, it's sort of nice. Right. It's a little bit easier for dealing. You've seen with, a few on there? Dealing with these rascals, yeah. You know, Mille Lacs Lake is really known as a uh, one of the premier walleye fisheries in the state of Minnesota. But realistically, you know, over the years we fish for. <laughs> Just about every imaginable species of fish in this lake. It's a phenomenal smallmouth bass lake. It's a great muskie lake in more recent years. They stocked muskies in here about 20 years ago and they've been growing really big. Not, not it's got big panfish. Whoa. There you go. Thank you. Just oh. another decent, decent yeah. one. Not a giant, but no. a decent. Gosh darn it. It's a little bit of a workout in this wind. Oh. Got it, James. Boy, Ooh. man, is she going? What are you doing? Uh, uh, yeah, look at That's that. Look at one. that, baby. There you go. Yeah, look That's at a her. a good one. Yeah, she's a big one, boy. Yeah. She's a big one. Oh. Want the net? I got her. I can take care of her. Okay. I got her. You just keep us on the fish. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Bouncing around in wind is not necessarily fun. Boy, she's a nice fish. Whew. Come here, come here, come here. There you go. Uh, there. Finally. That's a whopper. Yeah, that's a big gale there. You know, one of the reasons why we enjoy coming to this lake is because it, it helps us learn so much about uh, uh, walleyes with different presentations. Every or any single presentation you could possibly think of for a walleye anywhere in the country works on this body of water at certain times of the year on certain parts of this lake. Just take a look at this. Mille Lacs has long been a testing ground for walleye fishing's most popular and effective techniques. Like it's the birthplace of slip bobber fishing for walleyes both day and night. Nice, nice healthy fish and Mille Lacs is just loaded with those 22, 23 inches, and it, it, a lot of fun. Yep, yep, well, cool, well. Longline trollers cover shallow shorelines and reefs with original rapala minnows, particularly at night. Oh, got him, Jim. It's also one of the first places where crankbaits like shad wraps were cast for walleyes Ooh. across windswept rock reefs when active walleyes prowl the shallows. Mouthful of shad wrap. While live bait rigging with leeches remains standard fare on Mille Lacs throughout much of the fishing season, it's actually three-way rigging with ultra-long finesse spinner harnesses that was developed and refined on its big windswept waters. And it's a perfect way to cover water a little quicker than a, than a uh, live bait rig, not quite as fast as a crankbait, and it's a great presentation option for not only catching but locating walleyes. 
And in recent years, the dog days of summer have been dominated by anglers trolling crankbaits on lead core line across vast, deep, open water basins. There we go, that's not a bad one right there. Walleye anglers also throw jigs and soft baits, cast crankbaits, and troll bullet sinker spinner harnesses in and around weed beds. There's another one, David. The fact is, you'd be hard pressed to name a popular walleye tactic that doesn't catch fish on Mille Lacs Lake. They've been gobbling it. Oh, got him. It's also a great place to hone your skills, learn new techniques, because they all produce under the right conditions. You know, you know I'm fishing one of our angling edge, quantum angling edge technique series rods with this new quantum size 15 XO reel. It's made, we designed this stuff for walleye fishing and right now we're live bait rigging or light jigging. It's so much fun. I can handle it from here, man. You need the net here. Yeah, I got it, I, I got I got I the got net right yeah, here. You just stay on the fish in the wind. Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of, and it's spooled with floral carbon. You know, rigging is nothing new on this lake in this part of the world. Yeah, 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 you know, this type of fishing with a rod and reel like this is a, a mainstay when these fish get out on the mud. But this lake has a history. Some of the methods that we're using today all over the country were birthed and developed here on Mille Lacs. And uh, just to give you a couple ideas, it's kind of fun to look back. As far as I know, the development of spinners going way back to Little Joe Tackle Company, which was out of Isle, Minnesota on this lake, they made a, a spinner called the Little Joe Spinner. That was one of the first popular spinners. Since that time, we fine-tuned it and refined it and, and got it to a, a finesse approach as today that most of the yacht guys use. You're not gonna be pulling those spinners on, yeah, you know, 40-pound mono like we did then. The other presentation that this lake is famous for is cork fishing, slip bobber fishing, and, uh, 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 it got fine-tuned here on Mille Lac. And uh, uh, that's a little bit of history of the lake. And uh, as far as presentations go, those two presentations that we still use today pretty much leech. started right here. A leech. Leech. That's a better fish. You know, we were talking about different technology, or I should say presentations that were did, that uh, Mille Lacs was really a hotbed from and you look at the back of this boat, you'll notice I have splash guards on here, wave whackers. Wave whackers are actually designed by some boys on the southwest side of the lake, or southeast side of the lake. The same thing with this trolling motor, a Vantage trolling motor for back trolling. This area is really... It's a mecca for walleyes. Yeah, it is, <laughs> but it's a, also where uh, a lot of uh, this particular trolling motor this Vantage trolling motor for controlled uh, drifting and back trolling, more are sold in this region than any other portion of the country. It's amazing how many of these guys that only fish walleyes, they don't even have a bow mount trolling motor. On this lake, on, on a given weekend, there could easily be a thousand boats on here. You heard me right, a thousand boats and they're all fishing walleyes. And if you look at the at at the transom mount trolling motors, like that guy's right there. That that what that guy's got one sitting right there. Uh, on you check them out. I would say probably close to half of them got a vantage sitting on the back of them. I mean, in a heart of walleye country, in the upper Midwest, that with a set of splash guards on the back. Some guys will fish with a kicker, some will use their bigger motors, some will hit you with, with today's modern mercury tillers. You can, it's amazing what, what you could do with that. So, I mean, I mean, these boats are all rigged to be fished off the back in many, many cases. You know, we fish both, both. I dropped the, the bow mount and he's got the transom mount and that way our depth finders, we're looking around, we're covering so much water and there's times if one guy hooks a big fish and, and from the boat control aspect to fight the fish, he's fighting the fish and the other guy, like I'll take control off of the front, even though right now he's controlling most of the, the fishing we're doing spot on spot off of the transom. But I do have the front down for that reason. So I can see what's happening. I can see fish that he don't, don't see off the cone and say, hey man, there's fish a little bit shallower or a little, little bit deeper, whatever the case might be. 
So we always drop both trolling motors just so we can really cover a big swash of water and have maximum boat control, especially when you're slip drifting like this. This is what we're using is a, a simple live bait rig, but this is a, a little bit different than what was used years ago. Realistically, some of the early tournaments were actually held on this lake. Al fished them. How many years ago? You know, what we're using is the bread and butter slip sinker system, which has been so effective for delivering live bait for years. Uh, some of the very first tournaments ever, walleye tournaments ever, to hit the country started right here on Malek. They used to be out of the aisle end of the lake, and I was fortunate enough to be here when this was happening and fish a lot of them. And we'd come way, way out on these mud flats then, and we'd act actually run, run with compasses and time our, uh, time our times to run over these humps to find some of these deep water structures out here that they refer to as seven mile, nine mile, eight mile. Now they got names on them. And, and how we found those spots 40 years ago or so was mind boggling to me when I stopped and think about it, but, but that's how we found them. You had no idea what they actually looked like. Today I look at my Lake Master Chip on this lake that I have fished for so many years for walleyes, and it's amazing to me the spots that I didn't know and actually what a lot of these spots are shaped like. Whoa, 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 that's, oh, you got a Bronco? And we're still using these live bait rigs with night crawlers and leeches, but they've come a long way now. Uh, the, with white line snells made out of floral carbon, little beads and adapters that'll help you catch more fish. Well, if I can nice slow fish. Slow down enough. Nice fish. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a, oh, you got a bronco? And we're still using these live bait rigs with night crawlers and leeches, but they've come a long way now. Uh, the, with white line snells made out of floral carbon, little beads and adapters that'll help you catch more fish colored hooks uh, uh, from the old days uh, uh, of the initial live bait rig to what we have today. Again, it's part of the development that is ongoing constantly to help us find and catch more walleyes or more fish, period, through, through somebody fine tuning, taking something that was good and constantly making it better. As simple of a rig as the slip sinker live bait combo is, it is still being refined. Let's start with live bait. Fraybill makes a variety of containers that are rugged and fully functional for live bait fishermen, whether you're using leeches, crawlers, or minnows, because everyone knows hardy bait is the best. BMC has vanadium fast grip hooks with micro barbs which allow anglers to stick and hold jumbo walleyes better than ever. <laughs> oh man, how I love it, how sweet it is. Fluorocarbon line is invaluable when it comes to live bait presentations. It's virtually invisible underwater and far more durable than mono. What about sinkers? Well, VMC has unique switch it design that allows anglers to change weights with the snap of your fingers. Or when you're done fishing for the day, it's simple to take off and no more God, tangled up it? rigs in the boat or the car. You know, in my opinion, having been in a walleye game my entire life, there's four bodies of water that have had a major, major impact on the world of walleye fishing. They're Lake Erie, Lake Winnebago, going out west, it's the Missouri River system, and naturally Malek, the lake we're talking about today. You know, on our show, it's rare for us to ever talk about a specific lake. But this lake, its impact on a sport of walleye fishing is legendary. And it's going through some challenges now. Uh, 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 because of the regulations, uh, Native American netting, uh, a certain size slots have put a lot of pressure on the male populations of walleyes. We've got an overabundance of, of pretty good sized fish, most of them female, that's causing a problem. And there's some current concerns from the DNR on that. We've also got issues de dealing with zebra mussels that have been in here just a short period of time. We don't know what the long-term ramifications are, uh, are, are gonna be on that. But, but, but there's no question that whatever we find out on Malak, as it develops and we refine it and see all of these things and the impact that they have on walleye fishing, it's gonna impact you 
on any body of water that you walleye fish today, your favorite lake, whatever happens here in some way, shape, or form is going to have an impact on your favorite walleye fishery. That I promise you. Hey, here's a great article by Joyce Myers. I really, really like, like the way she explains biblical truth. Right to the point, no baloney. And uh, uh, she titled this one, Keep It Simple. Think serving God is complicated? Here's how easy it really is and why that simplicity matters. We can be complicated and we can complicate serving God. Before I realized this, it was easy for me to complicate things no matter how simple they were. Do you know people like that? I know a lot of people like that. I used to be one of them in, in, in some areas. And some, she touches on some highlights, but her closing comments were really good. It says, believe that God loves you. There are going to be people in this life who don't like you. So why waste time trying to make them like you when all it does is steal your peace? And if you believe that God loves you, it doesn't matter anyway. God is simply calling us to come to him as a little child. No matter what the situation, how we feel, what we think, or what others may say, we need to be able to say, you know, this may not make any sense, but I simply believe God. <laughs> Serving God isn't complicated. You just need to read the word, believe it, and do it. I promise it'll work every time. It's that simple. <laughs> From all of us at the edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.